right, well, here's our gasket. We have it on here. I showed you how to do that before. Use a couple of bolts. Uh, these have nuts on the back side because uh, the, the intake manifolds are not threaded. So put a nut on the back side. What this will do is help hold the gasket in place. Nothing worse than trying to hold a gasket with your hand. You're trying to scribe and the gasket moves and you scribe off uh, where you want to be. So just put a couple of bolts in there to hold it in place. You can still hold it down with your fingers and just take a scribe like this and just trace it around, trace around the gasket. This is exactly what we're looking for here. Let's go right around the port. And this is where we're going to end up cutting to, to this point right here. And I'll do both sides here. And again, allow yourself plenty of time. This, this is not going to happen overnight. To do a uh, intake manifold, it takes a couple of hours, an hour and a half to two hours to do a good job on a manifold. Of course, I've been doing this a real long time, and I've probably done hundreds of manifolds and too many heads. I mean, more heads than I care to remember. Um, but as you get better at this and time goes on, it'll go faster. You'll get a little routine down that works for you. And like I said before, everybody does things their own way. I mean, some shops might do this a little different. That's fine. This is the way we do it. And we've been doing it a long time, and it's a pretty common way of doing things. But as with anything and anything else I've shown you in this, uh, in this series here, degreeing a cam or finding top dead center or this or that, everything has its little uh, differences between one shop and another. This is pretty common stuff, though, and, and I'm trying to show you the easiest way to do stuff that is what I call bang for the buck. More bang for the buck for you, less time consuming, and just to get you down the road and get you some good horsepower. Um, so here we have it right here. It's scribed up. And uh, I'll pull this off and be back in a second. I'll show you what it looks like after this. Okay, and here we have it with the gasket removed. And of course, here's our scribe marks right here. As you can see right on in. So we're gonna take all this material off right here. Again, that, you know, that might not look like a lot to some of you, but really that's quite a bit. And again, you times this right here, this area here, this area here, and a little bit on the inside times eight other cylinders. That's quite a bit of horsepower. And like I said before, port matching and intake like this can be oh, anywhere from 10 to 15 horsepower, sometimes as much as 20 horsepower, depending on the displacement of the motor and how bad off it was to begin with. So we're gonna cut that there. Um, again, we're gonna use a, this is aluminum, so we're gonna use a single fluted bit. This is a, a pretty large flute right here for rough cutting. It takes a big bite out. You gotta be careful of these things right here because they, they tend to grab and jump. So you wanna kinda get a, a firmer grip on this one. What I'm gonna do is on this side here, I'm gonna cut the really bad looking one out here. It's already scribed to the same size, so we're gonna cut it on this side here and, and get it all shaped and nice for you. Um, another thing that I can't emphasize enough, eye protection. Again, I wear prescription glasses, and, and uh, so I, I tend to not wear extra glasses on top of these because it's hard to see. And nose protection, a little lung protection here. And you probably wanna wear some ear protection. Uh, these make quite a bit of noise. Um, a head is more of a solid chunk of, uh, of metal. This is a little thinner area here, and it's, it's gonna sing a little bit, so ear protection might be a good idea. So we're gonna get on in here, and I'm gonna try and finish up with someone butchered here, okay? So here we go. Okay, I've pretty well done hogged that out now. Um, again, this is a pretty, uh, pretty big fluted bit right here. It's made for taking lots of material out. Now I'm gonna do a little more finish work on it and take a little less material out, so we're gonna change bits here, okay? So we're gonna go to one that's a uh, little less aggressive of a cut and uh, get this thing just about finished off here. So we'll pull this off. We're gonna go to this one right here. That one right there, you can see the flutes are a lot smaller. It's a different shaped uh, bit. It's a little, little less aggressive. So we'll pop that in here, give it a little cinch up, and we'll be on our way here. Oh, before I forget, Remember, keep the bit moving. Don't hold it in one spot. Even when you're trying to shape a, uh, a corner area out, don't just hold it there and grind in the corner, okay? Because it's hard to get that divot back out. Always keep it moving. If you're in a corner, keep rolling it back and forth like this, uh, and that'll, that'll get the shape that you're looking for. You can do a little bit of back and forth like this up and down. Again, though, if you keep doing that or you just hold it in one spot, you're just gonna burn a hole into a spot and it's gonna be hard to get out of there, okay? So let me kind of give you a little idea here what we're talking about. Well, that's shaped pretty well right now. Um, that's about, we're right on up to the edge of the uh, scribe line that we wanted to, to get at there. And now what we're gonna do is put a finish on it. And I've showed you this before. This is a little cartridge roll. This will put a, a nice desired finish on there. And again, you don't wanna polish intake runners at all. So we're not gonna polish this. 
nothing more annoying than someone saying, I got ported and polished heads or whatever. And it's like, they just, if they're ported, they're ported, okay? But no one polishes this stuff. So don't do that. We want to be sure the air has a nice uh, textured finish, a slightly textured finish to keep the air fuel uh, 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 atomized as it goes down the uh, runners and into the combustion chamber. So we're going to switch here. Again, we're going to undo our air here. Don't try and change bits on a uh, die grinder that's plugged in. All you're going to do is cut your hand open. Uh, so always disconnect that. I'm going to go here. I'm going to change this bit out. I'm going to go to the cartridge roll here. And these come in all kinds of different grits. They come in 36 grit, 60 grit, 80 grit, 120. Uh, you can change different grits. Um, you know, this one right here, uh, I think it's a uh, 80 grit. It's kind of an all-around medium uh, uh, grit to go to. It put a decent finish on here. Um, so we're going to go right on in. This is real simple. It doesn't take very long at all. I'm going to finish this up. Mike here. Uh, this is one of the Ford heads that we talked about in an earlier segment where I took each combustion chamber and started with a stock set of valves. This one's got 351 Windsor valves in it. This one has uh, Chevy valves. And this one right here is ported with unshrouded valves and Chevy valves and all that in there. So we're going to see the flow characteristics uh, and the differences on, on all the different heads. Uh, this is a, a very popular high-end flow bench. It's a Superflow 600. It's industry standard. Basically, what we're going to do is measure it at 28 inches of liquid, uh, which you'll be watching the scale right here. He'll be measuring everything at 28 inches, which is an industry standard. Most people measure heads at 28. Um, uh, that just kind of gives you a, a run-of-the-mill uh, CFM that most other shops use so we can compare different heads and different flow rates in cubic feet per minute. Uh, so you'll be seeing the, the liquid come up here, and then Mike will be taking a reading up here, and then we'll calculate it out. We can tell you the, uh, the different flow uh, ratings at the different lifts. We're going to be testing this head here at 300, 400, 500, and 600 inch lifts, okay, or that's 300 thousandths, 400 thousandths uh, lift, um, because we want to give you an idea of what a mid-lift flow is and what on the high end is. And, and most